Welcome to Ponyville's library. I will be your temporary librarian, the great and powerful Trixie. Oh, it's you. <laughs> what are you doing here? Uh, of course we have books. That's what the whole library thing is all about. Twilight wanted to make sure that ponies in Ponyville would remain educated. Celestia knows why. Why am I here? <laughs> well, there's a very good explanation for that. <laughs> you see, Trixie's doing some, uh, community service. <laughs> yeah, you know, to make up for a small mistake. It really wasn't that much. I don't even know why I have to be here, but... <laughs> Here I am anyway. What happened? <laughs> I wouldn't want to bore you with the details. <laughs> oh, you have the time? Uh, well, I'm, I'm sure Trixie could tell you a little bit. It, it was kind of an epic story after all. <laughs> but we will have to keep it down. Starlight's around here somewhere, and the last time I got loud in Twilight's library, she put a spell on me to keep me quiet for almost a whole week. It was awful. I could barely be understood by ponies. What is the great and powerful Trixie without her great and powerful voice? <sighs> Regardless, I think I was about to tell you my story about why I'm here in the first place. It all started on the day of Trixie's comeback tour. <laughs> I decided that since I am going to be the counselor at the School of Friendship, that I should have a magical tour to end all tours. Literally, since I was going to be setting up shop permanently in Ponyville. <laughs> I'd never been anywhere permanent before, and I thought it would be perfect to give my audience one last hurrah as the great and powerful Trixie. Did you see that? I can even trill in a soft voice now. <laughs> Isn't it wonderful? Starlight will never know. Shortly after Twilight went to go live in Canterlot because the princesses decided to retire, <laughs> whatever, the ponies of Ponyville realized that Princess Twilight's castle was just going to sit there and collect dust. So Starlight got it in her head that she should turn the castle into, how do you say, a central hub for ponies to come and enjoy themselves. Twilight has a massive library, as you can tell. It would take all of us our entire lifetimes to get through all these books. Trixie was very upset at the time, though, because she was setting up her tour. Remember? The one that will end all tours? And she needed Starlight's help, but Starlight wanted to repurpose the castle. <sighs> Having to choose between friendships and magic, it seems so counterintuitive to what ponies stand for. So Trixie decided to combine the two the grand unveiling of Twilight's castle as an open hub for ponies, and Trixie's magical tour debut. I was going to go all out for this one. I didn't want to hold back any kind of magical feat. I brought all the biggest, brightest, most colorful fireworks that Trixie has ever had. Oh, was that a little too loud? <laughs> I don't want Starlight hearing this. <laughs> well, Trixie was setting up for her show when she brought out these fireworks. She was just trying to set them up so they would go off at the exact right moment for her show when Starlight came to ask for a favor. <laughs> of course, being Starlight's best friend, I couldn't tell her no. And I sort of forgot one of my safety precautions <laughs> when it came to using fireworks, of course. 
It's totally not Trixie's fault that Starlight interrupted her train of thought. Trixie would have done the safety precautions if she hadn't done that. But I digress. It's still Trixie's fault in the end, I guess. The day before the grand unveiling, Trixie needed to run through her magic show, obviously. She performed all of her magical feats for Twilight's friends. They were a good practice audience. Unfortunately, because Trixie was so distracted, her fireworks display was a little, well, <laughs> over-impressive, if you get what I mean. They weren't supposed to go off. They were supposed to wait until the next day to go off. But there they went, shooting into the sky and all around Trixie and the other ponies. I swear, that Fluttershy pony goes up three octaves when she screams. It's practically like a nail-grating squeal. One of Trixie's biggest and most show-stopping fireworks sort of made its way into Twilight's castle. <laughs> it found the library and Starlight, who was setting it all up, and then exploded. It was a magnificent display of Trixie's face in firework light. Unfortunately, books are somewhat, uh, <laughs> flammable, I guess. Starlight came running out of Twilight's castle, screaming about a fire. The fire ponies had to be called. I don't understand the point of fire ponies if unicorns can just use magic to douse the flames anyway. But whatever, they were helpful in this one instance. Pretty soon we had another problem on our hooves. <laughs> the library was now, uh, well, destroyed. Whatever wasn't burnt was waterlogged. And books and water mix about as well as books and fire. Starlight was freaking out about having to tell Princess Twilight about it. <laughs> so Trixie volunteered to do it. You know, rip off the band-aid and just get it over with. I'd never seen that expression on Twilight's face before when she magically appeared in the library. The look of sheer horror as she grasped the ashy remains of her library almost made it all worth it for Trixie. <laughs> I mean, it was terrible, of course. <laughs> Twilight reprimanded Trixie for her use of illegal fireworks. How was Trixie supposed to know that those fireworks were too dangerous to be around ponies? She was never told this before. And if they were so dangerous... Why wasn't the great and powerful Trixie hurt by them? <laughs> but I digress. After three days of Twilight crying, grasping Ash, and crying some more, she finally decided to regrow her library tenfold. Princess Twilight's friends scoured across Equestria, looking for books to put into her castle library. Celestia knows why. Starlight even convinced Trixie to go with her to the castle in the Everfree. <laughs> that was a challenge. They found some very interesting spellbooks and rare oddities that Trixie would love to get her hooves on, but uh, Starlight insisted that she proofread them first. <laughs> Whatever. If they have any spells that I can use in my magic act, she's promised to let me read them. Not that Trixie ever really reads. <laughs> I, I mean, shh, be quiet. Starlight could hear us, remember? <sighs> Where was I? Oh, that's right. <laughs> the Everfree. Trixie totally saved Starlight's life from a rogue cockatrice, by the way. <laughs> Starlight wasn't watching where she was going. She was levitating a giant stack of books. But Trixie saw the cockatrice just at the right time. She just so happened to have her personal mirror on her. <laughs> so she turned the mirror on the cockatrice. And its stony glare bounced back at it, turning it to stone. Oh, a 
Um, could you potentially not tell that to Fluttershy? <laughs> Even though the cockatrice is technically a monster, I get the feeling that she'd still get on Trixie's case. So let's just keep that between us, <laughs> okay? Over the next few days, the word got out that the princess was trying to amass a library, something they didn't officially have once Twilight's library home was destroyed. How many years ago? Uh, it feels like seven or eight now. Oh, Trixie's so old. Books were pouring in from all over Equestria, and then it got even worse. The griffins, the dragons, the buffalo, the curin, the hippogriffs, and all other manner of creatures decided they wanted to contribute to the library, too. Soon, Twilight's castle was filled to the brim with books. It was like a scene out of Trixie's nightmare. Trixie couldn't take two hoof steps in the castle without a stack of books threatening to topple on top of her. So it was decided that Twilight's castle would become one giant library. Oh, I know. How lame is that? A couple of the rooms, of course, couldn't be converted. Like Trixie's new bedroom and the kitchen, of course. <laughs> Trixie and Starlight were allowed to keep their bedrooms as they were. <laughs> Book free in Trixie's case, thank you very much. The kitchen became a community kitchen where ponies who wanted to have their families come gather for family reunions and other strange get-togethers. Trixie swears that she sees that pink pony, Pinkie Pie, in this castle more than her, and that's a feat. Since it technically was Trixie's fault that the original library burned, Trixie graciously offered to volunteer some time to being a librarian, <laughs> since Trixie can do any job anyway. Never mind that Twilight and Starlight asked her to do that in exchange for all the trouble she caused. <laughs> she clearly volunteered, so they didn't need to uh, punish her. So that's my story. I have graciously accepted the role of temporary librarian just over the summer. When the students come in the fall, Trixie can shed all of these books and instead hear Pony's problems. It wouldn't surprise Trixie if ponies come to her having problems because of all of the books that they've been assigned. Trixie's never admitted this before, but <laughs> she thinks that students have entirely too many books to read, and that's what causes them stress. And stress is what causes them to need a counselor. So I guess in a way, even though books are <laughs> troublesome... They also keep Trixie in business. Uh, of course Trixie can read. Uh, who do you think Trixie is? She had to read about the Alicorn Amulet. Thank you very much. It's not like Trixie had to pay some pony to read a book for her so she knew what the pictures meant. Uh, you're not judging Trixie, are you? You don't make Starlight hurt me. Do you? Well, now that you mention it, um, Trixie doesn't really read often, so, um, maybe she forgot. <laughs> you know, since it's been a while since she was in school. <laughs> what was that? Oh, <laughs> Trixie attended Celestia's School for the Gifted Unicorn. Graduated. Oh, right, yes. Uh, uh, Trixie totally graduated from that school. Um, uh, the year? Uh, well, it's been so long. Uh, I forgot. Lying? The great and powerful Trixie doesn't need to lie. She just doesn't see much need for reading. Well, if Starlight 
does give her some of those magic books, I'm sure she can convince Starlight to read them to her. After all, Starlight's egg-heady, don't you think? Oh, oh, fine. Okay, fine. You win. Trixie can read, but she can't read well. Ponies come in here all the time asking for recommendations on books, and Trixie doesn't really know any books to recommend, so she just finds colorful ones and says these are the good ones. It is starting to cause Trixie some um, problems, though. <laughs> just the other day, Mrs. Cake came in looking for a cookbook, and Trixie didn't really know where Starlight would have put those in her uh, organization, so she just grabbed a book and said, Here you go. Only Mrs. Cake came back and said that while she enjoyed Romeo and Juliet, it didn't really have any recipes. Trixie just said that she wasn't looking hard enough, <laughs> so I told her to go home and reread it again. Why doesn't Trixie just ask for help? Uh, Trixie doesn't need help. Trixie is the one that helps others, of course. But maybe... Well, it's not like she asked for it. But uh, if you're offering... Nonsense. You've got plenty of time. You were coming here for a book. So maybe we'll go find that book together, and then you can teach me how to read it. It's perfect. That way, no pony will know Trixie's shame, and she won't have to beg Starlight, and Starlight won't have to think anything less of her. Oh, you... <laughs> Trixie doesn't care if you think less of her, obviously. So, what book should we read? What about this one? It looks large. Trixie would be a pro in no time. What's an encyclopedia? Oh. Well, that sounds boring. What about this one? Farm care. <laughs> Who would need to read about farm care? You put a seed in the ground, you water it, and it grows. <laughs> what more is there to it? No, no, no. It can't just be any book. Trixie needs to learn how to read with the best books. Obviously. Daring what and the who now? <sighs> Put it in the maybe pile. Yes, there's going to be a pile. Keep up with me now. What about this one. Oh, the Journal of Friendship. Hard pass. All the books on the first floor are so boring. There are 32 rooms in Twilight's Castle. I'm sure we can find something a little more suited to Trixie's tastes. <laughs> this might take a while, so... Whatever you are planning on doing today, you're not doing it anymore. Come along, assistant. This will be the greatest exploration into Trixie's brilliance in the history of the great and powerful... Oh, 